millions of these fishes. Eh? What's going on with this junkyard? This is the biggest exporter in, in Colombia. What's up guys? We're here today in Villa Vicencio, Colombia, and we are gonna be seeing a insane private collection, all sorts of different freshwater species that are exported from this region. The guy is an exporter, and we're about to go see what he's got. That is if we can find them. We should have about five minute taxi ride, and we're gonna be meeting Heiko Blair and the owner, Pedro Zia. We've been traveling on this dirt road, very bumpy, for about five minutes, and I think we have another five minutes to go. A lot of the roads here in Colombia are unpaved and uh, very, very rocky. Ash and I were saying that by the end of this trip, it's gonna feel like we've played an NFL career because of how much our heads bump around in the car. Do you know where Pedro lives? Fingers crossed we can find this place. It's supposed to be a small finca or farm, which this fish wholesaler, Pedro, Pedro Zia, one of Heiko Blair's good friends lives at. Are we here? Aqui. Okay. okay. All right, we've made it here to the finca. We got the locked gates, so we gotta wait for our friends Heiko and Pedro to come open up for us. Hopefully they're here. Hopefully this is the spot. Heiko! <laughs> this is it guys, Heiko's here. Heiko! Hi. It's locked. It's locked? How'd you get in? Well, All right, well, I guess this is it. Guys, look at the mountains in the background. This is how you know you're in Colombia. This is how you know you're at the finca. <laughs> Heiko. Huh. All right, welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> Long time no see. Yes. Heiko Blair is an amazing fish explorer. So this is the finca, this is the farm. Yeah, it's very big. There's a natural pool, there's a mountain. There's the creek running behind here. This is the aquarium. Mm -hmm. Just don't know where Pedro is now. They're trying to find him. Oh. <laughs> That's a tank right This has to be one of the crazier. Well, he has a lot of old aquariums, naturally. It's an impressive collection. <laughs> Even yeah, empty, it's impressive. <laughs> Look inside. Yeah. We're at the Orinoco Fish Farm. We're with Heiko, who is an ichthyologist, so he's gonna know a ton of the different fish that we're seeing today. This is where the fishes will breed, spawn, where they copy, and this is why it's a copio. This is the biggest exporter of freshwater Colum fish in Colombia. Originally, he didn't want to let you come in. Finally, I convinced him so at least to film a little bit. Awesome. To have an idea about yeah. the size of this installation. Four buildings. He says when it's finished, I have only 2,000 aquariums. Eventually, I will have 4,000 again. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. He's got so many tanks. Now, this is only one of the four buildings. Building a fifth one now. But he's just received some new fish. They are panake. Unilineatus. They're very young ones. The fish are just coming in, but uh, you will see plenty of the simulants, the green or blue neon, which form gigantic groups. You can see very nice altum angels, and you see how perfect they are. These are cardinal tetras. Here they are. Bleeding heart tetras. They come from the Amazon basin. There's some discus here. There are discus from Colombia. These are green discus. But you see there are millions of these fishes. Huh? These are the most popular fish in the aquarium trade. These are different? These are fishes I collected. I collected up in the Greek, up here. You can see down here, Corridoras. They're also kept in very shallow water. And Otto Sinclus, you know, these are some of the most sold fish because they clean all the aquarium. They eat all the algae. You see, they have food in here for them, lettuce. Many of these go tomorrow to Japan, to Yotaka Shoji, which is the oldest ornamental fish company in Japan. I started to export to them 69. Let's just go to the other hall. These are cardinals, no? They are in top condition, very, very nice. He really acclimatizes and feeds them very well. You never find a dead fish here. And he decided to do all this vats for the cardinal tetras because he says they keep much better. This is very similar to nature, very shallow water. Well, here you have again Otto Sinclus. They just arrived. 
Today came in two or three shipments and more coming tomorrow. You see, he puts in those roots because this is like nature. This is the nature of the fishes and he tries to give them the same in the aquarium. Look at that. What's going on here? We got arowana. Yeah, this is one arowana. It's kind of silver. He's got like some gold on yeah, top that's, of Yeah, that's the normal arowana. We see a some. We're here with Pedro, who is the owner of the Orinoco Fish Farm, and we're going to be asking him some questions. How many years have you been in this business? Quiero saber a cuántos años tú lo haces ese trabajo. 52. 52 years. 52 years. How many different species do you typically have in the farm? Lo más tenemos. He has an average of 260 different species available. The three fish that are the most popular are the Altam Angels, the Neon Tetras, and the cardinal tetras. Then they also have the blue-green tetras. Wow, these are just so, so blue. Look at that, they look like purple. Pedro's about to feed the altums. He doesn't use any medication, all natural. The fish come, stay, and go natural. The altums are so sought after. During the three months that you can catch them, he catches a lot of them. Actually, in fact, he catches an extra amount. So many that he can still sell them during the other months. The very big danger, which very few realize, is simply the big market of China. And they want every fish, especially the altum angels. They want them at miniature size, hardly born, because they want 500 or 1,000 in box, so they pay very little freight. But in the meanwhile, 60, 70% die on the way and naturally with this high demand, the price has gone up tremendously. It has destroyed the interest in the market. What is she doing? So they only have a few different species of fish now, and that's because they've actually saved up these fish. Here are, um, yeah, prosilotus. The red fin. Do the tail, wow. look at the tail. Yeah, the That's tail is all striped. There are three or four species like this. They're very much asked for, especially in the United States. And these are jumbo cardinals. So this is the finca, this is the farm. Yeah, it's very big, you know, there's a natural pool. Wow, so Pedro's farm is located really right next to the stream, and this is a natural pool. So what they do is they dam it up using this barrier. This fills up and you got yourself a, a natural, super, super clean and freshwater pool. Genius. This is the only company in all of Colombia that keeps and ships all the fishes in natural water. What you've seen in Bogota and everywhere else is all city water, well water, have to prepare the water. It's not Salt, natural. This is why he never has problem with his fish wherever he ships them to. Bogota is very near. Very close. 83 km kilometers. And mm -hmm. he can take them from here directly to the airport. Uh, geographically, he's set up for a lot of success there. Exactly. Because he can get yeah. the fish, they're yeah. fresh. The best. They don't you know. have many water changes, don't go through all this stress and all this problem. They come from nature and they go directly to the aquarium. All right, so Pedro is boxing up some fish for a shipment that's going out. 200 per box. 200 per box. 200. So. And, and these are going to Japan? Direct. Here to Tokyo. Right. Mm -hmm. Tokyo. No problem. Anything unique about yes, these? Yes, the one with the stripe. I still have no idea what it is. It's an adult one, and most of the small ones are the same species, but you don't see the stripe so well. So the amount of fish that he takes, <coughs> is it sustainable? Are there enough fish where it doesn't affect the hobby? Eso sí es más peligroso contra una pesca artesanal que hacen los indígenas. La pesca artesanal es the danger for the fish in nature is not the what are being caught because first of all you can only catch them two or three months out of the year. The rest of the year you cannot catch the fish because there's too much water. You cannot penetrate the jungle to catch small fish is impossible. The destruction of the natural forests by the cattle everywhere, by the palm oil, by the oil and gas productions, they're killing the fish day by day, by polluting the rivers, by destruction their habitats. This is the danger for the future of the fishes. People don't realize that when the fish are being caught, they're going to be eventually captive bred. People just think, oh, more fish gone from nature, it's less fish out in the world. They have no idea. Yeah. They have no idea because they don't see this. Yo veo que 
la naturaleza es imposible de reemplazar. How did you get into keeping fish? En bicicleta repartía a domicilio y en una droguería. When he was very young, he drove around with a bicycle and he saw these small aquariums in the pharmacy shops and he said, this is not the right place for it and started to create his own fish farm. Has COVID affected your business good or bad? Or el not at all? Coronavirus, ¿te ha hecho mal? No, en el comienzo, fue muy difícil por conseguir conexiones. On the beginning of the pandemia, it was naturally extreme difficult and actually impossible because there were no flights. The flights were grounded. But then slowly, the airlines started to implement cargo planes. Then they were able to ship them around the world. It actually helped because the people stayed at home <laughs> and did to take more care of nature and their fishes. So the sales are going up. Thank you. Okay. So okay. much amazing. You have beautiful fish. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you're an importer, in the United States and you're looking for some very healthy fish, we'll leave the link down in my description to Pedro. You can contact him. And as you just heard, the fish are not changing hands dozens of times before they reach you. You know, they're going straight from his hands on the plane to you. So that's gonna result in much healthier and happier fish. So if you're interested, we'll let people know and they can contact you. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like down below and also subscribe to this channel. We got so many more things coming in this series for Into the Amazon. All it is is that little red button, smash it, click it, do whatever you want to it. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.